my up. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, I'm not going to bore you before I got into mathematics because basically my example, which should take the entire time, explains exactly why I love mathematics. So I want everyone to write down a solution to this high school slash seventh grade, eighth grade equation. Solve for x. x plus 9 equals 10. I assume the faculty are good. Write down the solution, yeah. Or just do it in your head, whatever. Oh, switch about that. Sorry about that, Sadie. I didn't like that for a little. Could have done it. There's no button right there. We used 14 steps. <laughs> when we talk about teaching. What happens so often to me as an algebraist is that we get cut out. And what happens is intuition comes in. And the problem I have with intuition is that if out of 20 students, one person doesn't understand your explanation, it's no good to me. Because in algebra, 20 out of 20 people understand the explanation. It's just, sometimes, for a problem like this, you're going to have 14 steps. So, one of the things I love about algebra is the way it forces you to think is so precise. And this is true of all other fields. I'm not saying that other fields don't do this, but because we, there's a common joke, which is that algebra is easy. 100% right, algebra is easy. That's why analysis, that's why number theory, all of it, if you can bring it to algebra, you're good to go, because then they're the easiest problems you can answer. Uh, but one of the things that, that amazes me is how much we do in our heads, and how much we expect the student understands in their heads. And algebra brings that to the forefront. So number one, let's talk about what the statement means to begin with. So if you're teaching, say, 7th grade, 8th grade students, the first time you show them this, what's the first complaint they're going to give you? Does anyone know what one of the first complaints you're going to encounter is? Who the hell is X? X is a, a letter, right? <laughs> X is a letter. So one of the things I look for when I'm teaching is I don't want to bully a student into understanding how to produce the answer, but have absolutely no reason to explain what they've just done. And one of my favorite terms is variable. Because what they'll do is they'll say variable, still having absolutely no understanding as to what x actually is. But that is accepted, because it's a variable. What is x when I write this? What am I assuming it is? One. Well, I'm actually going to show after 14 oh. steps it's one. But x is a number, right? <laughs> X is an unknown number, which we call a variable, but ki uh, kids will latch on to variable and they'll spit that back to you, having no idea it's a number. They think it's a letter. So I'm going to actually write down these 14 steps, and of course this is extremely tedious, and I'm not suggesting at all that you teach this to students. Instead, what I'm suggesting is that you understand abstract algebra so that you know the 14 steps you just asked the student to do in their head. So maybe when that student doesn't understand why the answer is one, this I think they can understand. But maybe when they don't understand why it's one, you're not just thinking, oh, this kid doesn't, doesn't get it. Because it's not that simple. So the first thing I'm going to write, and I'm going to do this like a two-column proof, is x plus 9 equals 10. And I'm going to give you a reason why I can write everything. Now this was given to me in this statement. By the way, this equality is equality of numbers. You can actually use integers or real numbers in this case. It's the same because the properties work. They both form what's called an abelian group. The next thing I'm going to do, which you would never think to do, is write minus 9 equals minus 9. Is this a true statement? And if a student asks you why, what's your answer? Because it's obvious, right? Does anyone remember what this property is? from number theory or abstract algebra. It's called the reflexive property. Everything is equal to itself. Equality is reflexive. So why am I writing that? That seems like a complete waste of time. This is the other thing that drives me crazy, is that we forget that when you start here, when you give them that analogy of balancing the scales, again, if that one student doesn't understand what's going on, is it because that student is wrong? Not really. It's because you're not seeing that what you're actually doing is using the fact that addition is a binary operation and therefore a function. Which means that if you have two numbers which are equal, 
right? Sorry, this number is equal to this number. This number is equal to this number. Then, since it's a function, when I add the two, it doesn't matter how I represent the numbers, I get the same answer. So from these two lines, I can claim, I did have to write these down because again, this is not the best way to do it, but if I add negative nine here, it's the same as taking 10 and adding negative nine. And that is because addition is a binary operation. Now we're already into abstract algebra because I've just used a binary operation. Of course, when you first learn algebra, you can simplify this in your head, right? But if you're actually forced like a computer only to use the properties you know about it, it's going to take a lot longer to get that x equals 1. So what did I do next? Next, I claimed that 10 plus minus 9 is 1. And this reason, this was difficult to come up with because I don't know why that's true, except I do. It's the definition. Right? Very often what ends up happening is that students don't even know what the definition is or when they should see that there's a property. So algebra helps you cut to that. Where are you actually using a definition and when are you actually using a property of the thing you've already defined? Even defining addition in itself is not easy. That requires lots of work. Uh, there is the intuitive idea of how to do it and that works to produce answers. but. To me, algebra isn't just about producing answers, as we've talked about already in this uh, panel. It's about sort of understanding the reasoning as to why those answers are produced. So that's the definition. And I'm going to claim now that 10 plus, where am I here? x plus 9 plus negative 9 equals 1. So why is that the case? Well, I come back to 3. This equals this. This equals 1. And now I'm claiming that the thing all the way on the left over there is equal to the thing all the way on the right over here. Does anyone know what this property is? Transitive. Transitivity. I use transitivity in my solution 1, 2, 3 times. 14 lines and I'm using transitivity 3 out of 14 times. I use other properties. I use reflexive once. I use, I think, symmetric once. But you never learn these in your first algebra course, right? Your solution looks like what? x plus 9 equals 10. Some might just have x equals 1. So if I'm a student and I see x plus 9 equals 10 and I see your solution x equals 1, that doesn't really tell me why, does it? But even more importantly, uh, even so, you could do this, subtract 9 from both sides, right? That's another way to do it. Why are you allowed to do that? Why are you allowed to subtract 9 from both sides? When a student asks you that question and you say, because you're allowed to subtract 9 from both sides, maybe that works. Maybe if you give the analogy of balancing the scale, that works. But really, the reason I love algebra is because I can answer it right here. These three lines tell me why I'm allowed to subtract 9. Because addition is a function. That's one of the reasons I care about it. So I'm going to spare you the remainder of this, but um, I was getting into it. <laughs> Were you really? Because I felt like I lost the room. No, 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 no. We're not going to go through the rest yeah. of it. Yeah. 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 <coughs> Like, these people think I'm insane. So, <laughs> all right. So, what would we do next? Then you can you can help me get through this. So I use this is transitivity. And now the four was by definition. Yeah, this is by definition of what? Of addition. Which is, again, not easy to define. You have to construct the number systems and that in itself. One of my least favorite things about our curriculum is how many people know what a real number is when they come out of high school? Zero. What's a real number? It's a real number. Not exactly. They know what a rational is, but a real number, that takes very high level math to complete. Right? Okay. What's a real number, Rose? Do you remember? It's a Cauchy sequence, right? Equivalence class of Cauchy sequences. Where am I here? Okay, now what should I do? What's the next thing I should do? Well, there's not one obvious thing, but I'd like to focus on <laughs> this right here. <laughs> what should I do with this left-hand side? Is there anything I can do with this expression? X plus 9 plus negative 9. Can I write this as something? Any property about addition? 
So, as Dr. Clifford mentioned, it's associativity. So right. you can group the nine and the negative nine. Good. It's associated property. It's a lot of fun, isn't it? I've got seven <laughs> steps. I have no idea what I'm doing. But I now want to focus on this piece. Can I claim that equals something? Zero. What does that equal? Equals zero. Why? Inverse property. This is the part that is uh, really cool. <laughs> I now need to write this. First of all, you agree it's true. But why is it true? Sorry. I'm really bad at four times. Reflexive. This is reflexive. So this is reflexive property. The reason that I wrote this is because now that x equals x and this equals zero, x plus this equals x plus zero, right? So why is that true? x plus 9 plus negative 9 equals x plus zero. Why is that true? This is because addition is a function from the real cross reals to the reals. Meaning that if you give me two real numbers, right, and the first one is equal to the first one here, the second one is equal to the second one here, then when I apply the function, I get the same answer. That's what a function does. It doesn't care how you represent the number. Here I'm representing 0 as 9 plus negative 9. Here it's just 0, and x is held fixed. That's why we care about functions. You can represent them any way you want. The inputs and the outputs are the same. OK, so that's a lot of fun. What do I know about this? It allows me to claim that x plus 9 plus negative 9 is equal to x plus 0. And that must be transitivity, right? So that comes from. I'm claiming this is transitivity from a 6 yeah. and then from 9. Well, what do I know about x plus 0? X. By what property? Mm -hmm. Almost over. Uh, identity property, right? So what do I do next? Well, I wasn't smart, so I have to now claim by transitivity between 10 and 11 what's true. This equals x. OK. But doesn't that thing also? So I have x plus 9 plus minus 9 equals x. This is transitivity of these two lines. But I've also have on the board that I'm going to switch the order, by the way. X equals this. Why can I do that? This was transitivity. Why can I switch the order of the equality? Because the equality is symmetric. And then finally, since X equals this, and this equals 1, what does X equal? So what's the point? <laughs> no, you're not going to teach someone who first learns this that, right? But you should know how to do it. It's fun to me. All right, fine, just to me. <laughs> this right here explains how you would program a computer to do it. When a student doesn't understand what's going on, instead of just assuming that because what you were taught was right, because you can produce the answer, maybe think about it algebraically. Maybe think about it using any other mathematics to really see where the confusion could go. Because I was also surprised the first time I did this, which was only a year ago, figuring out that this simple equation, which I can solve in my head, technically requires 
14 lines, and I'm expecting a student just to get it immediately, that's not exactly how it works. So I think I'm over. I'm going to stop at this point um, and open it up to questions if there are any. Why did you do this? Why did I come up with this? The, I, sitting down and doing it. No, I was trying to understand why we focus so much on two-column proof in geometry and completely shut the algebraists out. And this is what I came up with, is that if we taught how to solve these things using this technique, then it might be easier for students to understand the need for proof, or at least what the purpose is. Also, I'm nuts. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Any questions? I mean, I have a comment. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'm in JFE, and my unit is on expressions. And my my co-op teacher gave me like all of his notes that he normally uses to teach the unit. And the first day of the unit is like learning properties um, of numbers like these, and then they don't refer to it once they're at the unit. So I was like, what's the point? <laughs> like, why, why teach them one day proper, different properties and like not refer to it? So I thought that related to what you just did. Yeah, in fact, if you look at what's going on, then you see that starting with x plus 9 equals 10 is a horrible way to start. What you really want to do is establish the rules that they use. And you can do that using the properties. So one of the rules is that given two numbers that are equal, you can add the same thing. Okay, but you can do that in the abstract. Assume x equals y. Show that given a fixed number, using this process, you're allowed to add the same thing so that every time I want to add the same thing, I don't have to spend four lines, right? So, yeah, it's a good point that we don't do, I don't think we do enough of that uh, in the K through 12 group. And I'm sort of just like, this is the associative property. Remember it for your test, and you're never going to use it again.